Dark nights of the soul are one of the most sacred rites of passage that a person goes through during a spiritual awakening. So today I'm going to be explaining exactly what a dark night of the soul is, and at the end of this video I will share with you its deepest gift. A dark night of the soul is when we're going through a period where there is a deep level of transformation happening to our ego and our self-concept. This arises through our belief systems that hold together our identity and what we identify with being thoroughly challenged to the point where our foundation is being shaken to its core. This is meant to reorganize and restructure our being into a higher level of consciousness. And in order for this restructuring and reorganization to occur, we need to go through a massive ego death. And that's what a dark night of the soul is. It's what comes into the scene when we need to have our ego challenged to its very core in order for us to get in a state of surrender. And so it's also used as an instrument from the higher self in order to maneuver us and push us back into a corner, so to speak, in order so that we have no choice but to surrender. Because it's very rare that a being who's identified with ego is going to just willingly give up all of their belief systems that create their paradigm that they're operating from. The ego clings to anything that it can use in order to build its security and its level of safety within its own self-concept. So a dark night of the soul introduces a massive crisis of the psyche because what it's doing is challenging the very foundation that the ego uses in order to create its identity and keep it safe within its belief systems. So a dark night of the soul is when the psyche is in a state of crisis because what it's doing is having all of its belief systems that the ego uses in order to keep a level of security and identification with its internal and external environment and it gets completely tossed into a state of disarray and chaos because what's really happening in this stage is that we're entering an inner void. Entering the void is inherently uncomfortable to the ego because when we're in the void, we're not in a place of knowing. We're not in a season where we have the answers or feel secure about our worldview. All of the things we use to keep our self-concept intact are becoming unhinged in a dark night of the soul and we are being awakened into a higher level of consciousness. And because of that, there's a lot of unknown and there's a lot of expansion occurring. And because we're in the void, this is a sacred rite of passage that we enter during a spiritual awakening journey. It's just not honored as such because our culture only honors the milestones that we see when it has to do with reaching a certain age or getting married or graduating. So external events that are important to a specific culture or society is what gets honored and celebrated, but the internal events that a being goes through in their own transformation of consciousness isn't typically viewed as a rite of passage, even though it's a very powerful one on this journey. A common misunderstanding about the dark night of the soul is when we think that we only go through one during a lifetime. We might go through a very powerful dark night of the soul as we're entering higher states of consciousness and deeper levels of awareness into our reality, but those don't typically stop. What ends up happening is that we don't experience the dark nights of the soul as severe or intense as when we first started them initially, and that's because a dark night of the soul helps us grow in our level of consciousness by allowing us to become masters of surrender. That's one of the major gifts that a dark night of the soul gives us when we're more mature and evolved along our process. It's we're able to surrender deeper. And that's normally not the case in the beginning of our journey because what's happening in the beginning of our journey is that we have really volatile catalysts that pretty much force us into seeing some sort of higher version of what's happening in our internal and external world or something in our awareness that we currently didn't want to incorporate because that would have been too much for our psyche to handle. A very fragile mind does not like to be challenged. And so they'll have cognitive dissonance, which is a fragmentation of our psyche and they'll stay and remain in a state of dissonance rather than go through the very intense and uncomfortable challenge of being able to look at all the different opposing beliefs that we hold within our being and then start to consolidate them. So another way of looking at a dark night of the soul is a state of consolidation that we're forced into. It's where we're faced with our own hypocrisy 
or outdated belief systems and programming that now we're having to face in order to shed that version of our skin. And because of that, we have a lot of reorganizing going on, both on an energetic level and a cellular level. Things are being called into question during a dark night of the soul that are pivotal to our internal reality and to our external reality. Even our mediocrity is being challenged in this phase of consciousness, because a lot of the times we are aware of when the ego is in an inflated and exaggerated state of being, but we're less aware of when our ego has built its entire structure and identity around an inflated sense of self and a subordinate sense of self. And so a dark night of the soul doesn't discriminate as to what type of ego structure it's dismantling. It dismantles anything that's no longer serving us. Because of that, a dark night of the soul is in correspondence with the initial stage of alchemy, which is called negrero, or otherwise known as calcination. And during this phase, we are thrown into the proverbial fire. And what this is doing is reducing us to our barest form because the ego holds on to all of its self-concept, all of its different paradigms, all of its internal confliction, and all of its neurosis. And because of that, there's a purification by fire or a trial by fire that we're undergoing in order for us to be reduced to our ashes. And this is what we're gonna be working with in the next stage of alchemy. But depending on the level that we surrender during this phase of being inside the void, we'll also determine our level of being when we exit this phase. We're always going to be in stages or in seasons where we're more confident of our belief systems than other stages or seasons. But the ego doesn't want to ever go through having to surrender their belief systems because the ego's in a state of fear when it's that fragile. So dark nights of the soul are able to reconstruct our level of being so that we're able to be more flexible and surrender, but also wiser and resilient. It's enormously humbling to be in a stage of not knowing and to surrender the things that got us up to this point of our journey. But doing so, we might be able to actually come out the other end of the void and still resonate with some of our belief systems. The point is, are we going to be so attached to our ego's fragility that we're not able to ever be in a state of openness to possibilities or to paradigms and awareness that we won't let penetrate our egoic structures. And because of this, it takes a great spirit to be a willing participant in their ego's own demise. Because the ego is neither here nor there. It's not a bad guy, it's not a good guy. It's just our self-concept. It's how we interface with reality and with this dimension. But when it becomes inflamed, it contracts into a state of fear. And then that becomes the way that it relates to the world from a level of fear and attachment. In fact, it's so afraid of surrendering that it will trick itself to believing, oh, I already went through a dark night of the soul. I'm out the other end. Now I'm at the top of the summit. And so it will even deceive itself in believing that it has to go through another round or another level of awakening. So when we're in the void, it's open-ended, it's directionless. And because of that, we bring our projections into this space and we'll project onto the void whatever it is that we think is going on. So if we're in the void and what's actually happening is that we're going through a massive awakening where the higher self is penetrating our psyche and our body mind, we might interpret that as depression or we might interpret that as feeling very blocked in life and stuck where we don't know how to move forward or proceed or what course of action. Or we might feel panicked or anxious. And all of these different ways of relating to being in the void are how the ego is responding to the fact that it's going through a massive death. But the greatest gift that the dark night of the soul provides us with is allowing us in entering a state of flow because when we feel blocked or challenged, that's also a part of our awakening. However, it's a crucial phase where we're supposed to be in a state of deep integration and reorganization. That's gonna lead to a stronger and more resilient state later on, or what I call a season of knowing. We're gonna have seasons that we move through in our spiritual awakening journey, where we're more confident in our belief systems and seasons where we're not. And this is absolutely fine to go through, and that's how the higher self has us contract and expand our bandwidth. So the greatest gift that we're receiving during the dark night of the soul is the expansion of our being's bandwidth so that we can encompass and embody 
more of the essence of our higher self. And we can't do that if we're always relating from the world at our current level of paradigm and operating from our current belief systems, both about our internal sense of self and both about our external world. Because that stagnant energy calcifies and then it becomes an egoic structure where the light of our higher self can't penetrate our being. So the deeper we're able to allow ourselves to surrender into the unknown is also inversely what allows us to expand our bandwidth. And that expansion doesn't feel good but that's the medicine that we're given during a dark night of the soul. It's to expand our level of awareness so as to raise our frequency and therefore raise our vibration. Only our sincerity will be able to determine that. And so the more sincere we become along our journey, nothing can stop us. The less sincere we are, nothing can help us. I hope this has brought light to your dark night. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakenings. See you next time.